name is Steve LeBanc and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe and ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And again, it, I say this at the beginning of every video, but I am I have started putting up this uh, little handy dandy clock so you can know what to just jump through to get to the actual video. But I'm going to start with an appeal, begging once again, if you could hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button, all that stuff. Fan Dabby Double Dose, it's all fantastic, and really thank you so much for everybody does that. And anybody else, please do that. That'd be really nice. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry to have to ask you. YouTube does prioritize uh, massive multi-billion dollar uh, international companies over me. Okay, fair enough. So I really need your help, and thank you so much for giving it. And do you know how grateful I am? I give away stuff. I give away stuff every week on my channel. The thing I'm giving away this week is really good. It's uh, Doctor Who, Green Death, fantastic story starring uh, John Pertley, Katie Manning from 1973. Uh, this is Katie Manning's last story as Joe Grant, and uh, I, if you if you not if you don't have a lump in your throat when the when the Doctor uh, and her go their separate ways, the, there's some I would I, I would go for some empathy uh, therapy very quickly because it's really a very very beautiful moving scene. It's a great story. Um, if you're not if you've never seen any classic Doctor Who, really give it. Uh, I, I really give this one a, a, a recommend. It's one of the better ones. It's very it's very indicative of the poetry era, which I I just kind of love. Look, it looks like it was shot in 1973 because it, it was shot in 1973. Uh, even though I think the special effects kind of hold up pre you know, pretty well today. Uh, in general, I think it holds up. Yeah, the fashions don't so much. And it's got, this is a special edition, got tons and tons of extras on it. All you have to do to get me to give it to you is uh, first, subscribe to the channel. Subscribing being the very important part from my perspective anyway in this in, in this equation and uh subscribe to the channel and leave the hashtag maggots hashtag maggots you can leave them here you can leave them on twitter you can leave them on facebook don't bother on instagram i you know i'm too old to be able to handle instagram uh <laughs> you know I, my grandparents uh, uh uh bless them i went them i went with them to what was it curries or somewhere this is must be the early 80s to buy their first vcr the video uh, uh video recorder and yeah, I got it all set up for them. I was young. I got it all set up for them. And uh, you know that clock on the front. You said VCRs, the little clocks on the front uh, was was flashing forever. They never managed. I said it. And, uh, and whenever the power went off, they needed to reset it. It flashed constantly. They never worked out. That was a level of technology they could not get over. Instagram is my level of technology. I can't get. A, I just. I just got to accept that about myself. I am not. Uh, I. I'm not down with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and we do the uh, the prize drawing on Sundays and the TARDIS zone. And there's about two hours after Doctor Who in the UK, which is so we go on about nine o'clock uh, UK time, which is what uh, four p.m. on the East Coast of America and one p uh, and one p.m. on the West Coast. And listen, if you want to tune in, please do. But just be aware, we're not very pro <laughs> the current era. So if you really like it, you don't want to hear people saying nasty things about it that that stream may not be for you but honestly if you want to come in and chat and be on the live chat and uh and uh rebuff what we're saying go ahead we, i don't mind that'd be great anyway uh, who i am down with it is daniel leach daniel leach sent me an article yesterday on facebook and thank you very much for it i hope i pronounced your name correctly sent me this article from the guardian the guardian if you don't know is a uh i would say a very progressive liberal left-wing leaning paper it's what all you know the the um, how can I explain? It? This is a newspaper that 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 if is Christian or does read the paper, it'll be this one. It's a very like lovely. It's a very like affluent socialist newspaper. That's how I would describe it. If you if you're reasonably well off and you believe in socialism, the Guardian's the paper for you. So you know, again, they have to come out attacking the fans. And really, can I, I would really just like to have a day. Just a, I wasn't going to do a, a video about anything about Doctor Who. Uh, like yeah, the current state of Doctor Who today. Uh, I just wanted to have kind of a nice mild day, but no, they had to come out I'm out an article uh, attacking us. So uh, I, I guess I have to respond. Oh, but before I, before I, I, I get into that, um, just want to say if you're watching this video and you really really like uh, this current era, the Jodie Whittaker Chris Chimnall era, more power to you. You know, I, I have nothing against you, and I'm really glad you're enjoying it. I really I really am, and I I, I genuinely wanted I genuinely want to. Um, stay as strongly as I can. Don't let my utter hatred of this era, and I do utterly hate it. This my utter hatred of this era impact on your enjoyment of it. It, it, it you know, it really shouldn't. There's like, 
Look, I, there's things that I like that a lot of people hate, you know, which is fine. Uh, it doesn't impact my 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 enjoyment of it. It my my hatred of this shouldn't impact your enjoyment of it. And you know, honestly, you know, I wish you happiness, peace, well, well, whatever nice things I can wish you. I I I uh, I wish you. It's by a guy called Paul Kirkley. Uh, I don't know absolutely nothing about him. Although I did go look at his Twitter feed because whenever you see these articles, that's what I do straight away. And no, like nine times out of ten, you hit this like. Brexit, 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 Orange Man bad, Orange Man bad, Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. I didn't see any of that in his, but I went back a few days. I didn't see any, any of that on his feed, so, okay, you know, they, you, you passed the first test there, Paul. Uh, but he failed, he failed the test in general. So, you know, this article is really designed to diminish fan criticism, and I'm going to explain why, why I think that is at, uh, at the end. I think that's the function of this article. Well, let, let's start, start going through it. And uh, I'll try and keep my uh, my blood pressure to an absolute minimum, if possible. The article is, What Has Happened to the Magic of Doctor Who? And it's essentially talking about how fandom has always severely criticised Doctor Who, which is true. You know, again, I've been active in fandom, I don't know, all my life, because I've been a fan all my life. So it starts off talking about 1977's story, The Deadly Assassin, which to a great extent redefined the Time Lords from what they had been seen to be earlier. You know, they were they were... Yeah, we saw them briefly in the war games. They were very like aloof, uh, <laughs> you know, like very above it all, uh, um, kind of perfected race with no, yeah, you know, with no problem. And then we saw them again in the Pertwee area, I area, era. They <laughs> they were kind of the same, just with a lot of very seventies tinsel going on, you know. But then, but then they completely got redefined by this story, the Deadly Assassin, uh, which is a fantastic story. It's coming out on Blu-ray. Uh, in April, I think part of season fourteen. Really fantastic story, uh, but it made it, it made the uh, the time was far more layered and interesting, and it and it uh, it really like pulled from the headlines of the day because in you know, the uh, the seventies you had like uh, people were still reeling from Watergate, you know, it's in seventy seven, and they lo and they had lost uh, uh, a great deal of belief in the institutions of government, which they really strongly uh, really strongly believed in beforehand. Um, so, you know, I think that's, and, the, and I think Doctor Who was very, is being very contemporary, uh, by, uh, by reflecting. But Doctor Who fans hated it because it really went in the face of what went before. But uh, for me, it didn't blow up, uh, well, for me, it defined, uh, uh, Doctor Who law rather than, rather than blowing it up. Uh, but, but even, um, even looking at it like, like, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, it, it, uh, academically, that's what I'm looking at. If you're looking at academically. I see how it doesn't blow up what really went before, and I think that's really the overriding fear that's going on through uh, through my segment of fandom right uh, right now, the one I most closely identify with. But the, the article will talk about that, and so will I. So fine. So he talks about it. it's a funny way of showing appreciation. Guy knows nothing about fandom clearly. Uh, when has liking? Okay, I have. I'm not reading the entirety of this article. If you want to read the whole thing, go to theguardian.com and uh, do a search for what happened to the Magic Doctor Who or Paul Kirkley. I'm sure will come up straight away. When has liking Doctor Who been a prerequisite for being a Doctor Who fan? Uh, if you don't believe me, try braving Twitter after any episode airs. Yes, you know there is Twitter storms that go on after each episode airs because a lot of people are very upset. But I would say this is being really disingenuous because. You know, Twitter was the place where we had people screaming for, uh, for years now. Oh, I love your fanboy tears. Oh, do you not like it? Oh, I love it. I love that you're upset. You know, we had that over and over and over again. I think just genuinely bad people. Very, you know, very bad and cruel people because, you know, they got a feeling that somehow we weren't on with anybody who wasn't on board with it wasn't on board with their agenda. The agenda that they... They swear it doesn't exist, but if they if the agenda wasn't there, they wouldn't be supporting it the way that, the way they are, which is what I think is going on with this article. Fine, let's go on. Uh, but yeah, so again, don't bring up Twitter and say, "Look, all the uh, you know, all the bad, all the bad racist, misogynist fans." Yeah, because honestly, the fans of uh, of uh, of the Chibnall Whit Whitaker era ha haven't uh, uh, excelled themselves in personal morality. You know, in my opinion, and certainly not on Twitter. Even an episode as lauded as last month's Fugitive of the of the Jadoon, in which Joe Martin was revealed as the hitherto unseen creation, uh, unseen incarnation of the Doctor, infuriated a vocal minority. How do you know it's a vocal minority? 
excuse me, you don't know, a gas at how it how it might impact the show. Yeah, we are genuinely worried about that because you know Chris Chibnall's track track record is not good. It's not good. You know, I, my uh, after watching most of uh, of season twelve, my biggest complaint is it's boring. It's dull. Yeah, it's it it's uh, yeah. It seems to be written by people who have no idea of science fiction. Uh, or uh, you know, I seem to be more at home with soap operas because it is. And you know the reason why I think it's dull and why I think it's not working. It's not really, really not pulling together, and it's falling off of a cliff of ratings. It's because it's a, exactly the same reason with Star Trek Discovery. You're hiring people not based on aptitude, not based on talent, but on skin color and genitalia. It's 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 the most regressive form of anti-racism I can possibly imagine when it's the definition of racism and you're sacrificing qual the quality of the show to make a what I feel is a, a, a racist point. No, yeah, you know, I don't think anybody I I, I, you know, I don't think I yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it. I've never met anyone who says, Well listen, if you're a woman you can't write science fiction. Like, I've never met anybody who said that. That's just insane. I mean look honestly uh, uh, my favorite author from the the Virgin New New Avengers uh, range, which is if you oh by the way if you're a reader they're really good yeah if you can find them they're really 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 good talk to is 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 sent off its own universe now to to a great extent but uh, Kate Allman Kate Allman fantastic I you know, I could reel off fantastic female writer other fantastic female writer one after another but you know it, it, yeah it, it's just ridiculous and know what you're saying because you have a different skin color you can't write doctor it's insane it's just that's just pure insanity uh so anyway so and, and, and by the way the, th the thing about future D D D doom the other thing i found uh, personally obnoxious about it. Although, the Joe Martin Doctor, I thought, was far superior, and Atanas was way better, far superior to Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, um, in convincing me that she was a Doctor. Uh, I think her costume need, need, needs to change, though. But it, it, uh, what I think the, the reason he wrote it was not for storytelling reasons, but so that he could have a female with darker skin being the original jo Doctor. For some weird reason. I think that was that's what's going on. Not entertainment. No, no, yeah, because if it was entertainment, it'd be like, well, anybody could play that role. No, I think it was specifically written for a darker-skinned black woman to be the Doctor. Yeah, and just so people will go, make it uh, critic-proof. If you go, oh, well, this, this is not very good. You go, what's wrong with you, racist? You don't like a, a, a you know, somebody with different skin color. No, and again, that's the thing. I think they're using this identity politics to shield themselves from criticism. And it's disgusting that they're doing that. Uh, similarly, the haunting of Villa Diodati, well, whatever it's called, uh, which even the most stubborn who refused Nick must concede was a bad No, it wasn't! It really wasn't! It was boring! It was boring and kind of, you know, I think, oh, look, honestly, I do these reviews of Doctor Recaps, and, and my first watching of it, normally I fall asleep. You know, I can't keep my eyes open, especially in Can You Hear Me. Oh, God, it's just, it's so hard to get through. It's so freaking hard. Uh, so yeah, no, it wasn't a banger, and, and yeah, and it wasn't a great episode. And yeah, the, the the one thing going through every episode of this era, which you can't get over, is Jodie Whittaker, who is horribly miscast, and it's got nothing to do with her gender or genitalia. Is that that she has no clue what this character is? I mean, like when she tries to be intimidating and make she makes like these faces, like Ugh, to the Simon, like what the hell are you thinking? Why does anybody let her do that? Why are they portraying this doctor as an idiot? Which they are. I don't know. It seems to be a, a real, genuine, uh, creative choice. Anyway, so they're saying that uh, the story upset some fans because it uh, decanonized Mary Shelley, uh, Mary Shelley's adventure with, with Paul McGann's eighth doctor and Big Finish. Ah, honestly, not so much. I, I you know, I have to go, go back and listen to them. Maybe they, they could live together, both things. Or, you know, if I'm going to decanonize anything, it's this era. This era is gone from my mind. The minute Chibnall leaves, oh, please, speedily in our days. And then, oh, then he goes off off, off, off a cliff here. He says there is also a uh, also exists a small but noisy rump of uh, fandom committed to broader wailing about how woke Doctor Who is uh, is now dead to them. Yeah, again, what you're pretending that that woke agenda isn't there, really? You know, that's the reason you're defending it. 
That's the reason you know you're defending it. That's the reason I know you're defending it. That's not because this is fantastic. It's because you don't want the first female doctor to fail. And the first female doctor is failing. And it's failing not because she's female. It's failing because they, 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 they made a bad show. But I'm like, they just made a bad show. Um, and then he goes on and talks about how the second Doctor got, uh, was, uh, had complaints that he was idiotic or a pantomime character. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Here's the difference between the second Doctor and Matt Smith's Doctor to a great extent, uh, maybe a bit the fifth Doctor, is that sometimes they would, pre they would pretend to be idiots. They would pretend to be uh, non-threatening idiots so they could get past the enemy's defences and outwit them. This Doctor's not pretending. She genuinely is an idiot. Again, she's not an idiot because she's a woman. She's an idiot because she's written and performed like an idiot. Okay, so then they talk about 1980s fandom. Um, it mentions Ian Levine. Uh, and then, really interestingly, no mention of Chibnall at this point. No mention of Chibnall going on uh, open air and labasting John Nathan Turner and Pippa Jane Baker uh, for for their, their terrible writing. Uh, which yeah, uh, uh, he he probably well well uh, uh, regrets nowadays. Uh, in fact, yeah, I think I could go and we we can say that with uh, quite quite conclusively. Uh, fine. So it, and also yeah, the the Ian Levine's hatred of uh, later nineteen eighties Doctor Who. Uh, it, it it spends it. I think it was from a personal hatred for John Nathan Turner, where they were friends and they fell out. If you've ever read the book, uh, John Nathan Turner's Life and Scandalous Times, really, really, really good book. I really recommend it strongly. And it gives you such an incredible insight into the Doctor Who production on time. And it's really quite a tragic story. You know, if you saw Mark Gattis' uh, docudrama, An Adventure in Time and Space, I really want them to do a sequel to that called Further Adventures in Time, A Further Adventure in Time and Space, about this era based on that book. That book is freaking marvelous. Uh, then I talk about the Russell T. D uh, Russell T. Davis era. And how they then uh, it was attacked. You know, no, that's not true. I was there. Okay, there were things in it that people were uh, weren't universally happy with. I think the vast, overwhelming majority of fandom, especially by the time Tennant was in his second year, said we are in a golden age. We are in a freaking Doctor Who golden age, and we couldn't believe. I couldn't believe it that first year when it was like I. I grew up with Doctor Who being like an embarrassing. Uh, an embarrassing personal love, you know. So, yeah, it, it was it was kind of shameful to like Doctor Who when in the eighties when I was a kid. Um, but like now, it was like I couldn't believe how popular. And we all knew we were in a golden age, you know. And when, when, when Moffat took over, I think that first season was fantastic. Uh, I was ready for him to leave at the end, though. You know, I thought I was kind of uh, ready for something new. I was really ready for Chimno. I thought Chimno was a good choice. He he seemed to know, you know, he seemed to tick all the boxes. He liked Doctor Who. He had, a, he had un I thought he had an understanding of it. He, uh, you know, he had a good career outside of Doctor Who. And, and I just thought he would do a good show. And I, who knew how, what an awful show he would produce. He, and this is just like something he wasn't able to pull uh, pull together. You know, the, the article talks about how we uh, people complain about the Moffat years were too complicated, so Chimnall dialed it back and made, uh, made, made more simple stories. And people go, yeah, there's a happy freaking medium between, like, you know, this labyrinthian plot, you know, wheels within wheels within wheels uh, on one side, and, like, really basic bad children's television on the other, which is what Doctor Who is. It's very basic bad children's television which I think is why it's so freaking boring. So what's really going on with this article? This article is, I think, desperately trying to defend Doctor Who because uh, this production team cast the uh, a woman to play play the role, which they see as a massive step in uh, being, being progressive, progressively moving forward, um, and they don't and they don't want to see it fail because of that. And, and, and you know, I think the fandom men, as I think Doctor Who fans who are upset about it have a potential to make it fail, are making it fail. The, the ratings are falling off a cliff right now. The, the normal audience is is not interested. They've switched off. I think the ratings are bottomed out, though. I think they don't think they're going to go any lower than they are. Maybe for last week's episode. I really don't know. I don't think they're going to go any lower than they are. Uh, and they'll probably get a bump uh, in the next couple of weeks because they're really promoting it very, very heavily. Yeah, they will down to uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Moffat and <laughs> Mark Gaddis saying, you know, what a fun idea this uh, this Joe Martin Doctor is. And you know what? Everything they said was right. It could work. It still could work. You know, they, he may not do anything awful with it, and it could be something really interesting and entertaining. 
it's just, you know, based on his other work, we find that reasonably unlikely, and we're genuinely scared about what he's going to do with it. But articles like this tell me what tell me one thing, and it, you know, tell me a couple of things actually. It, you know, it tells me that we're that we're succeeding, that we have them scared, that the numbers do matter. You know, even though they say they don't. Yeah, you know, oh god, the spin I've heard this week. Even though they say the numbers don't matter, the numbers do matter. And yeah, you know, the reason, one of the reasons I think is that it is not doing well is, uh, it, oh, firstly, obviously, it's boring. It's not a good show. It's not an engaging show. It's very preachy, and people don't like it. Listen. It's losing against Dancing on Ice. You know, it has Country File before it, which is one of the most boring shows I've ever seen, and Call the Midwives after it. Country File gets bigger ratings than Doctor Who. All uh, right, fine. So I would say that that's an indication it's not doing very well at all. But yeah, what the what these genre entertainments need, they, they need us core fans. I really believe this. They need us core fans to work as sheepdogs to bring the normal audience in. You know, I think uh, uh, you know, whenever they forget that uh, and they, they alienate their core fan audience, they're, they're, the, the, whatever it is they're working on financially suffers. You know, I think Star Trek is not as relevant as it was. I'm sorry, Star Trek's not doing well. Star Wars. Star Wars was the most, you know, one of the most important uh, franchises. Ever. It's, com it's lost its cultural relevance. I'm sorry. It has com almost completely lost its cultural relevance, and yeah, and they and that and the reason that the Mandalorian happened is because the fans were screaming, "We hate what you're doing," and they were screaming, "We hate what you uh, we hate what you're doing," and they and they and they realized like they needed us, they needed our you know, our support, and without it, they are going to fail, and and yeah, that's what I think the Mandalorian was, and I think that's probably what what we're going to see from now on. You know, a, a real genuine turner, which is what I would really want to see from Doctor. Who. You know, I would rather, much rather, be watching Doctor Who that I enjoy watching. I really, it hurts me that I watched it. Yeah, you know, that the Doctor Who has been uh, so horribly abused, <laughs> and I really would say it's been horribly abused. So this article ends up by uh, on a funny note, talking about about how, uh, but the, uh, how how Chris Chibnall went on uh, open air. And attacked uh, JNT and Pim and Jane Baker, but you know they bury it in the last two paragraphs. So they they hoping you won't even get to that. I think they bury it in the last two paragraphs, and they just do it as a funny. <laughs> no, the truth is, it's pure hypocrisy of Chibnall to be crying about now. In fact, uh, in 2018, Ch uh, Chibnall. This is the last paragraph. In 2018, Ch uh, Chibnall. Uh, where are we? Uh, in 2018, Chimel uh, dismissed his younger self's words as a load of nonsense. Yeah, I bet he's feeling that now. Uh, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. E either way, it's coming to remind that whenever anybody lifts a rock to expose those darker, damper corners of fandom Davis warned us about, chances are. Uh, uh, chances are what emerges will be a load of old nonsense as well. See, again, I think that's the, the, the core of... Of this article, this article is saying, "Don't listen to the fans who are saying we hate it because we we are saying loudly we hate this. Don't listen to them. Watch it anyway. Please watch it anyway because we don't want it to fail because she's a woman and that's very important to us and we don't care about your show. That's what they're saying. That is what they're saying. And you know, well at least that's what I think they're saying. Uh, and you know, just just shut up. <laughs> yeah, if you could just shut up, I could shut up. I don't have any screaming in my camera anymore. It'll be really, really nice. But please, please, uh, just stop with this nonsense. Stop it. Stop it. You're doing. Yeah, you know, the reason Doctor Who is failing is because it's crap. You know, and uh, yeah, the, yeah. So the 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 last line of this article is: uh, any show that continues to provoke such passionate debate is clearly doing something right. Well, it was. <laughs> until Jim not arrive. when it's arguments when the argument stops he needs to worry that's true you know and you know when the when the arguments will stop DC Comics Marvel Comics I, I yeah I put out a video yesterday about DC Comics and I haven't even thought about them in months maybe years when I used to be an avid reader you know it, it they they are they were ground zero for the the woke invasion of culture and uh, they were the first casualty of it and, and you know we is it happened it, because it happened the first I moved on, you know, that my pain from uh, from losing the American comic book industry, which which is, we essentially have done, because uh, they're completely unrepentant, uh, it, it's over. I, you know, I, my mother, I don't care what they do. And that's where Doctor Who is heading. Doctor Who is heading for cultural irrelevancy. because, And you know why? Because they try to use its cultural relevancy for social engineering. And that is the wokeness. 
that inhabits every pore of this this era of Doctor Who, and that is, and that is one of the many reasons why I utterly hate it. But if you like it, good for you, mate. Okay, I want to think of you. What do you think? Uh, let 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 me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, like, share, subscribe. You want to win that DVD? Uh, don't forget the hashtag Max and have yourself. Generally, again, if you disagree with me completely and you hate me and you're spitting at the screen, uh, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. But, you know, dude, wherever you are on this, have yourself a fantastic day. I really mean that and I really hope you do. Thank you for listening.